see that you get a little more information. But before we do that, uh, Chief Irving Paulus is here, and I want to see if he wants to say just a few words. <laughs> Can you say it? Because <laughs> we got to give people a chance to ask questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to set a record here. <laughs> I'm going to have a short presentation. My presentations are usually two hours. So we're just starting out, and uh, it's never the only area until 1030 when I get through talking. <laughs> but there's so many things to talk about. There's so many things to say. And for the opportunity to come down here and tell you about what happened in the courts is a, is a great opportunity for us. But uh, the main concept that I have of this is that we will present to you uh, a problem and, and, and an ask that you as citizens of the United States because you are the, the United States. And you you are you are the government. And you are the ones that say what, how the government is supposed to conduct themselves. And they are not conducting themselves correctly. So our, our message to you is take a look at and listen to what we have said and inform your government that you as citizens of the United States, as representatives by your conduct, disagree with what you're doing, and we want you to honor the treaties and live up to the words that were given to, to, the, to the native people. As a statement that says, we hold these truths to be unchallenged. And, and it goes on and it ends up that there will be justice for all. And, and there's a period. But it, it, the sentence really should, should really say, and justice for all, except women, blacks, and, and natives. <laughs> because we talked to George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin in 1744. We explained to him how our government is, how it works, and how it functions. And after we got through explaining to them in 1744, 23 years later, they declared their independence and in a revolutionary war. And they said, we want to be like the Haudenosaunee. We want a government where we have something to say. And so they wrote the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution based on what we had told them. And they conduct their government like we conduct our, our, our meetings. We have three groups in our meetings. We, are, we are have, at, at a grand council, we have the elder brothers, who are the Mohawks and, 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 uh, and uh, the Senecas, and we have the younger brothers, who are the Uniteds and the Sakuras and the Cayugas. And so when something gets passed, a speaker, from the elders will stand up and say, we have listened to what Tadadawa has said, and we have decided to do this. And we send this over to the younger brothers. And the younger brothers speaker will not stand and say, we have discussed this issue, we have listened to what you have said and, and what you have determined, and we have agreed, agree, uh, uh, we have decided that we will agree with what you said. And we send this message back to you. And then the speaker from the elders then stands up and says, we sent this word across, they sent it back to us, and he repeats word for word what was said. And now we, we return what you asked for, and we send it back to the Anadagas. And the Anadagas then said, we either have listened and he repeats the words of the speaker of the elder brothers and the younger brothers as it went back and forth. And he says, we and Anadagi have listened to what has been said, and, and we agree that this is what, how it should be. Now, if you listen to what I have said, you, you can understand that when your government was set up, 
you set up the Senate, and the Senate has a speaker, which is like the, our, our elder brothers, and you have a speaker who then speaks for the Senate. And he passes laws over to the House of Representatives. And the House of Representatives have a speaker, just like the younger brothers do. And they pass it back and forth until they both agreed, and then they send it to the president. And it's like what they send it back to Tadadaho. It says, this, this is what we have decided. And Tadadaho says, we have sat here in Onondaga, we have listened to all of the words that have been said, and we agree. So from this day forward, this will be the law. So that is how your government works, like our, our, our government, with the elder brothers, younger brothers, or the Senate and the House of Representatives, and the President, and the fire keepers. We are the fire keepers on a dog. And what has been presented here is uh, a very short presentation on storage, but you have to look. <coughs> And this is why our lectures, Orrin and I, we speak for two hours. <laughs> because we make a statement, and then we give you the background as to why we say these statements. He mentioned that we are not citizens. And you might say, well, yeah, you are, you're citizens. The federal government passed a law in 1924 that said all Indians are citizens of the United States. It is a federal law. That's why you're a citizen of the United States. Well, <laughs> let me tell you about international law. <laughs> this is why we, we have been in the courts, and the courts don't listen to us or rule against us. And so this is why we put this uh, land rights petition into uh, AOS, because this is international. And before we got a chance to present, the Supreme Court ruled that what they are presenting, what they are presenting, is too late, and they dismissed our our presentation. So we never got a chance to explain to uh, the United Nations what the United States is doing. Now, uh, very quickly, uh, in 1948 and 1950, the United States passed two laws, 20, uh, USDA 25, which is a federal law book, 232 and 233. And 232 gives New York State civil jurisdictions over the New York Indians. That's what it says. They're not calling us Hood in the Shorty, they're calling us New York Indians. In the 1950, they passed the law that says, we will give to the United States criminal jurisdiction. Now, we, the Onondagas, as, as a sovereign nation, have criminal and civil jurisdiction in our territory. And we never give that right to the United States. So the United States could not give something to the state of New York that they never had. Besides that, international law says you know, the colonizing nations, which is the United States is a colonizing nation, building an empire, cannot do anything to the indigenous people that they don't agree upon. And so we were there in 1948, 1929, 24 and 1950 opposing the laws that they were passing and because of international law the citizenship act is illegal unconstitutional and invalid so we are not citizens of the united states we are citizens of the Onondaga nation and so we're here today to say, to tell you about these things and others to tell stories. <laughs> but we want you, as citizens of the United States, to notify the government that represents you, that you don't agree with what they're doing with the, with the native people. You're, they're not honoring the treaties. 
And if they honored the treaties, they would have to go back to the first one that we made. And that was in uh, April the 21st, 1316, 400 years ago. And members that are sitting here today, members of noon, made a trip down the Hudson River, remembering that this treaty was made, the two row Wampa Belt. And the two row Wampa Belt in, <laughs> I was talking to this woman over here uh, a little while ago, and I says, <laughs> I had a stroke in 205 and I lost my memory. I said, and I, I don't know, I know I know you, who you are. I know you, but I don't know your name. So please tell me what your name is. And so I do this, I can't, I, I, don't, I know I, you people, but I don't, I don't, this is my cousins I don't know. I say hi, <laughs> and I don't remember their names. Well, we're, we're really glad you came tonight. Yes. And and I I don't know about everybody else, but whenever whenever Herb talks, I always go away with what he said and chew on it for quite a while. And there's real meat down underneath. No, that. Let, let me finish. Okay. So <laughs> in in, in, in uh, twelve sixteen meeting with the Dutch people, they made a, a uh, we made a wampum belt that is known as the Turo Wampa Belt. And the English people, or the Dutch people who were there said, we have a way of recording, and we're gonna write this down. And we said, we have a way of recording also, we put it in belts. And we think in the future, you will not have your paper, but we will have our belts. And we usually, in a presentation like this, carry the belt with us, and I <laughs> moved out of my house quickly tonight, this evening, and I left my two row up a belt. Oh, but I would have my belt, I would show you the belt, and I would say to you, where's your paper? <laughs> <laughs> Recording this event. But the, they also made a, a, uh, a chain. Because we were becoming friends and we were linking together in, friends, in friendship, the chain consists of three links. And the first link represents truth, the second link re represents friendship, and the third link represents forever. So the agreement that was made in, at this time with the Dutch in uh, 1213 will last forever. And we're not sure that you understand what forever means. <laughs> in our terms, so we will tell you another way. We'll use different words. These agreements will, li will last as long as the grass grows green, as long as the water runs downhill, and as long as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So I don't know if you noticed when you came in today that the grass was green, <laughs> and this morning that the sun rose in the east and it set in the west. So what was decided in 1213, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still here today. And on the belt, the two row Wampa belt, there are two rows of purple beads. One row represents us, our ways, our government, our way of life, our rules and regulations, and the other row represents you people in your ship, your, your government, your way, and your laws. And we agreed at that time that we would never pass a law telling the other person what they could do or how they could live. You have <laughs> in Washington, D.C., a book 25, USDA 25, which is federal law. And <laughs> in this you have, it's all Indian law. It's white man's Indian law. It's not our law, our law. Because there's a contradiction between our laws and the laws in that book. Because if the laws in that book tell us what we can do and what we can't do. There's a law that says the Lakota Indians cannot go into the Black Hills and perform their ceremonies. They've been doing that for thousands of years. And the government says, no, you can't do that anymore. We've passed the law. 
the they're in the New York State done the same thing. McKinley Book Twenty Five, Indian Law, and in there it says the Anadawis cannot perform the white dog ceremony anymore. Very important ceremony. And we said, no, you can't do that. We are, this is a, a ceremony that's been with us for thousands of years. And we have to continue to present and do this law because it keeps the environment doing what it's supposed to do. And if you stop us from doing these things, you're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> so did you stop be, be, doing Yeah. Them? Oh, no. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, but if we do, if you get rid of us, like you, the George Washington wanted to do, then the ceremonies won't happen and you're going to be in big problems. Because some of the problems that you have with violating that treaty that we made with the Dutch in 1213, uh, because of what you're doing, you're polluting the waters, the air, and the environment. And because you, you, we have now what is known as global warming, and it's it's a uh, it's England or Greenland is uh, is melting its ice, and the ice reflects ninety five percent of the heat from the sun. But because of the holes in the atmosphere that you put there, because of your pollution has allowed the rays of the sun to come down and is melting this ice up in Greenland, which uh, means that they're uh, melting the ice, icebergs. And icebergs are fresh water. So the fresh water from the ice, icebergs is going into the ocean. And the ocean water is heavy because of the salt and the stuff that's in there. And because of this weight, it's like a, it's a pressure. And this pressure, of, of this weight of the water creates water currents. And the water currents that travel ar around the ocean determine the jet stream. And because of what's happening up in, in Greenland with the melting of the ice and the icebergs, you don't have that situation with the ocean. And the ocean is not doing what it usually do, used to do. You're not setting the record you were trying to set, are you? No, no, I, I, this is the short. <laughs> oh, oh, I know that. And, but I think some people yeah. want to ask you guys some questions. Okay. But anyway, this thing is still going on. And if you don't, if you allow the United States to continue what they're doing, it's going to get worse. So we are here just to remind you that this has been going on for 400 years. And it's up to you, as citizens of the United States, to inform your your uh, governmental uh, congressmen that you do not agree with what they're doing with the indigenous indigenous people of the, of the United States or Mexico or South America. And so we, we thank you for this opportunity to uh, to uh, address these issues. Thank you. That is He says he's forgotten a lot of things, okay? <laughs> and I, I read things about Irv, and uh, I think he knew a lot. If he's forgotten a lot, a lot of things, he still knows a lot and has a lot to share with us. So uh, one thing I wanted to, to tell you is uh, because they brought up the Doctrine of Discovery, I think uh, Freedom mentioned there is a conference on the 24th uh, and there are flyers on the table about it. Um, it's um, after repudiation, what's next? And uh, it, the ch there are several churches have, who have repudiated the doctrine, the Episcopalians, the Quakers. Um, Unitarians. Unitarians, thank you. And uh, Methodists have a whole year of study this year, so we're we're bringing a lot of people together to talk about this and what, what we can do next. So I think Amelia's going to handle the question and answer.
maybe you can just give the mic to whoever's going to answer. Okay. So, um, uh, okay. Hi everyone. We're uh, we're running we're running a little late on time, but we still have time for some questions. So I'm going to walk around with the mic to people who raise their hands. So, okay, I see the first hand. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you very much for all the explanation and information. Uh, some of the early press reports about the filing of this petition said you chose this venue over several others. Will we be seeing petitions filed in the additional venues, or is it a wait and see what happens here first? Well, there are two, uh, two other places we could have gone within the United Nations, the Human Rights Committee, and the other one escapes me. Uh, I've been a little busy since Thursday with the Cuyugas. Uh, but there is a rule in each of the three that you can only be in one at a time. Uh, the main reasons we chose the OAS are, are two. One, there's a six month time limit that you have to file in the OAS after the last insult you got in the domestic courts. I don't think it's worded that way. But, uh, and so that was October 15th, and so we had to file within that six months. The two UN bodies do not have a, a statute of limitation, so that was one thing. And the other was the jurisprudence that's been developed in the OAS Inter-American Commission. There is an Inter-American Court, by the way, in the OAS. But we can't take the United States there because it's never agreed to the jurisdiction, which tells us quite a bit, I think. So um, it has developed a very good set of decisions on behalf of indigenous nations. It started in 2002 with the Dan Sisters and the Western Shoshone. And then there have been well over two or three dozen more since then, mainly in Central and Southern America. It has a lot more experience with indigenous people than the UN bodies, which are worldwide. So the timing um, <clears throat> was one factor, and the other was this is where the best case law is. We still have the opportunity to go into the uh, Human Rights Commission, and the Human Rights Committee in the UN, and it's the Committee for the Elimination of All Forms of Racial uh, Discrimination. I don't think that body is shut down yet, but uh, those are the two UN bodies, and we may well go to them if, if that becomes necessary. We have to go through this process first. I'm, I'm not familiar with the OAS. What sort of remedies can they provide, um, you know, other than saying, oh yeah, you're right, can they do more than that and, and enforce more than that? Well, it's less than perfect. They, they cannot order any state uh, <coughs> they can only make recommendations. They can make findings and then recommendations. And what happened with the Western Shoshone for a variety of reasons, those recommendations, um, well, the United States systematically ignored them. And, and again, it's a matter of having the political um, power to not let them do that. But it would certainly um, keep matters moving in a positive direction to get a declaration or a finding by this international commission that the United States is in fact guilty of human rights. We think that that will keep the momentum building towards finally finding a solution to this historic problem. And so whether the United States wants to continue to act like the uh, <coughs> gorilla that it has been, and th try to throw its weight around and say nobody can tell us what to do, and that's us to, that's really up to us as U.S. citizens to not let that happen. So they can make recommendations and they can make a finding. And when we get those, we'll be much further ahead and we'll be much closer to finding some real justice. Other questions? Um, so, I think it was Orrin that mentioned the doctrine of discovery and the, the Pope 
and we know that he has kind of come out with statements like against fracking and about all these other things that he's denouncing. Is the doctrine of discovery, has the Pope said anything about that? Is that something that we could, you know, bring to him and ask him about? I don't know, like, who has a connection with the Pope, but I know that he's been doing some things that we like lately, so I don't know if that's something that, that is an avenue. <coughs> We haven't talked with the Pope. We talked with the Holy See. Um, I will have some discussion with them. Um, and what they said was that in 1544, I think, or 42, that they had disavowed, I think that's the word they used, uh, the doctrine of discovery. And our response was, well, our uh, researchers don't read that exactly the way you say. So we, all, we know all their statements that we're going through, uh, all those records. And uh, what we said was that the Pope has to speak to the issue today because it was their announcement that started the whole thing. And it's certainly going on. Uh, this discussion here didn't get into the uh, schools, didn't get into taking children away from families, didn't get into all of that very terrible history of acts of killings and massacres. We didn't go there, but we can. One more question? Thank you all for sharing with us tonight. Um, my question is, you know, clearly we've been given direction and encouragement to continue educating in a broad way, and Warren particularly around the doctrine of discovery. But is there anything more specific that we might try to push governmental officials to address uh, in the meantime while this process is underway? Because my understanding is that maybe a year or more until there's further kind of action in terms of the petition. So I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for us in that regard. I think that basically what we need to do right now is to educate the public because the public doesn't have the biggest notions of their own history. And we're working at that. We're working very hard, but um, um, as a professor, as a university for 38 years, a history professor, I know how woefully uninformed you are. And um, that's on purpose. And so you really have to move to your, uh, your sources. We're, we're doing our best, and I think we can do much better in that regard. I think uh, the churches are going to be very helpful in this, this business. But um, it all goes back to uh, what, going to the OAS and eventually to uh, uh, the UN in Switzerland. Um, they sanctioned the USA on behalf of the uh, Western Shoshones in the Treaty of Ruby Valley. And we have broken treaties. We have many of them. In, signed by George Washington. Those are just a few words that, that's on there, but there's much more. That whole history of, of how you became a nation, uh, you're not aware of that either, and the involvement of our people. Not 200 years, 300 years of discussions with your, your, their people. We knew each other by first names. And if there was a meeting about land, Nation had to be there, whether it was in Virginia or Maine. And, uh, we are busy, very busy. That whole history up to that point, you you begin your history uh, with with the uh, revolution. That's where you.
slavery history begins, and then you don't tell all of that. So there's better records now, but there's much more to be done. And uh, quite a bit of work is being done out there now on, on this issue. We've got quite a few of our scholars are moving, but it's still not good enough. And I think for starters here, you know, it would be talking to the school boards here, right here in Syracuse. You can do that. That you can do. And you can uh, demand a more fair presentation. There's information out there. What we found out about school boards is that basically school boards are made up of uh, successful people in business. And uh, they're, they're in your school boards. And of course, they're very interested in reading and writing and arithmetic, especially arithmetic. And I'm not too much interested in, in others. So they're, they're very selective. And also, school boards um, are the last word in what, what the material they're going to be teaching in the school, regardless of what goes on around the rest of the country. So I think you have to get involved in your school boards. And you have to become more effective uh, that way, uh, broadening, broadening the information just on the most fundamental level, very, very fundamental level. Start right at home. Snitch. Snitch. We just got a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how the newspapers really, um, really like to speak about uh, land claims. Ours is a land rights action. It states how we've been here from the beginning. This is our homeland. And we seek a healing. And we seek to make things better between us. There's no reason why we couldn't seek, you know, once our rights are recognized and we're given respect, there's no reason why we can't acquire uh, land that's not used by anyone. Maybe it's land that's good to plant on. Maybe it's good land for people to settle on. We have a small area that we live on and uh, it's a good home. We like it. It's gravel <laughs> or slate. And um, so, you know, we could, we could find a place where we could plant well and, and have people who do that, do it well on land somewhere out there. So it, that is not, you know, how much, how hard is that? It is not something that's disruptive where they make, make it, people think that it's a claim or throw everybody off or something. And we've never said that. From the very beginning, we said we would not ask anyone to leave. A lot of these things could be negotiated. So people need to help others open their minds to it. It is possible for us to live here with you in a good, peaceful way. That's what that two war wampum's all about instead of living the way we have been living, where people, at least what we've perceived over time, is that we should all just go away and die off. That's no way to live. So I just want to bring that up. It's land rights. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to wrap up. We did promise the West Pack Community Center that we'd be out by 9, which is in about 7 minutes. So, um, first I want to say thank you to Sid, Frida, Joe, Oren, and Irv, and thank you to all of you for being here. Um, my name is Amelia Lefebvre. I'm on staff at the Peace Council, and I relate to neighbors of the Onondaga Nation. So I just want to make sure you all know that we've got a lot of information about what Noon does over here. We've got a sign-up sheet for anyone who's not already connected. Uh, sign up, find out what we're up to. We've got a lot of exciting things coming up this summer. Um, 
noon, and the Onondaga Nation just finally published our wonderful booklet. Would you hold yours up, Nation to Nation? They're free, please take one. Um, if you sign up on our list, you'll find out when we will be holding a party to celebrate its release. And we're also looking forward to um, <coughs> celebrating the placement of a new historical marker at Onondaga Lake, hopefully Yay. this summer. So there's a lot of exciting stuff. Um, please stay connected. We need your help. The Earth needs your help. Thank you all for being here.